Joining us now on the MegaCast from the United Way for Southeastern Michigan is their Senior Director of K-12 Education and Community Initiatives, Ellen Gilchrist, is with us now on the MegaCast. Ellen, thanks for being with us today. Absolutely, happy to be here. Glad to have you with us. So right now, what are some of the key focuses from the United Way for Southeastern Michigan in terms of K-12 education? Now that we're back in school, the COVID-19 pandemic isn't as much of a factor in the classroom anymore, but that doesn't mean that some of the issues of COVID-19 aren't still affecting kids outside the classroom and in the classroom as well. Absolutely. We know that the impact of COVID-19 and the experience that students have had over the last two and a half years will be with us for a while. And so we are working to actively address some of the challenges that have arisen for our teachers, for schools, for families through school spaces to ensure that children are prepared and equipped to learn. What does that entail? Does that entail partnerships with these schools individually, or, or are these inter more interventions directly with students and families? No, so we are, we have a few initiatives happening. We have a direct partnership with schools where we are doing some community schools work to ensure that wraparound supports are available, and that's in a few select districts. But our biggest initiative that we're really excited about that's starting very soon, next week in fact, is the launch of a grant um, to invest in out-of-school time programming because we know that is an opportunity to help students recover from the learning um, that they missed as a result of the pandemic to also support their social emotional learning that we know um, was impacted as a result of COVID-19. So we're really looking forward to deepening our work in that space and ensuring students have what they need, not just when they're in school, but when they're out of school. Among some of the additional funding that's coming in for some of these programs, Oakland County has allocated about $5 million to be granted through the United Way for school district programs, including some of those out-of-school time programs. And, and Ellen, just how important are those programs to these school environments and how much of a need is there in, mo in many of our schools in the local area and really across the board in Michigan for more of an investment in these kinds of programs? So we know in our region that 40% of families do not have enough means to, to ensure that they can take care of the basics in life, right? That's housing, food, transportation, et cetera. And we know the additional cost of out-of-school time programming is an additional burden. We want to ensure that children don't miss out on those opportunities because their families are struggling financially. And when we can bring these programs to schools where kids are, we have an opportunity to, to fill a gap. And that's what we're looking to do with this grant. So these dollars are going to offset some of the funding challenges that we know schools already have. And they are going to offset the funding challenges that program providers have. And we, that's a really important distinction here too, um, because Programming is expensive, high quality programming, and those in the out of school time space that do it well want to invest deeply in children and to make sure that they have the best staff, that their staff are trained, that they're monitoring progress and impact. And we want to take those high quality service providers and we want to bring them to schools and to families through this grant. We're joined by Ellen Gilchrist. She is the Senior Director of K-12 Education and Community Initiatives with the United Way for Southeastern Michigan on today's edition of the MegaCast. You can find more information on United Way initiatives in our local area by visiting unitedwaysem.org. That's unitedwaysem.org for more information, programs, and other initiatives throughout the local area, including here in Oakland County. Uh, Ellen, as this funding goes into some of these after-school programs uh, and, and tries to really rebolster some of these programs and school districts especially that have had to neglect these programs because of a lack of funding in recent years, predating COVID even. What are some of the primary examples of these after-school programs that tend to have the greatest effect on that, on, on that um, secondary education from the primary daily education of these kids? So we're looking to invest in programs that are STEAM focused, where students are experiencing art, math, science, technology. We're looking to, to provide experiences where students come together and they build those soft skills of communicating and collaboration. We are looking for um, experiences that, that open doors and, and show kids mirrors. So they allow them to see themselves through these opportunities, but expose them to things that they've never thought were available to them, whether that's music, um, that, you know, the fine arts, that's bringing um, 
you know, special sciences into schools and thinking about that. We know that teachers are working really hard during that traditional eight to three o'clock period to make sure kids are getting that math, science, and social studies in ELA. We want to find additional ways to support that work um, through best practices that we know exist. So that's ensuring that students have a voice in the programming, that they get to problem solve and communicate. We want to ensure that there's consistency in this programming through the grant. So that it's not just a one time experience that students have and then they never have it again. We know that over time when students have this experience, then they are actually going to double down on the skill sets that we're hoping they develop as a result of this. Continuing on, we're talking about the funding that's going into a lot of these after school programs uh, through the United Way for Southeastern Michigan, as well as other organizations being funded by Oakland County and other funding across the state and around the country. And so I want to touch on this too, an important element of all these different programs that are going back into really a reinvestment in the classroom and outside of the classroom for students is the mental health side of things. Can you speak to that and how that plays a factor into where some of these funds are going and some of the programs that are being supported by these? We recognize that students have um, they've experienced trauma as a result of these last few years, too, and it's really important to provide resources to support that. And so organizations that are coming into schools and are able to support students and providing those needs or that do off-site programming for students, um, we want to ensure that they're eligible and that they consider applying for this grant, too. And that's a space where United Way has had um, some longstanding experience in working with Oakland County in this space um, in particular because it's something the county recognizes is an important area to invest in. Because um, when kids are healthy, not just physically, but mentally healthy, they're better equipped to learn and to grow and to thrive. I'm joined by Ellen Gilchrist, the Senior Director of K-12 Education and Community Initiatives at the United Way for Southeastern Michigan. Uh, Ellen, uh, what are some of the other key initiatives that are being pushed forward with some of these, funding, uh, some of these funds that we haven't discussed yet today? I think it's important to understand that these funds are available to schools within Oakland County, so they are eligible to apply. These are available for providers. So if you are an out-of-school time provider, whether that's before, after school, or over summer and during breaks, you're also eligible to apply for funding here. And you can do your programming on-site at a school or off-site at your particular um, program headquarters, wherever you are offering programming that we're really trying it to cast a wide net because we recognize that students have a wide set of needs across the county and that families have a wide set of needs. And so this is about um, not just going into schools, but it's really about thinking about that whole period of time when kids are out of school and need additional supports. This is also about really ensuring that programming is mitigating the impact of COVID-19. And so that's understanding the social emotional strains and the academic strains and then targeting something there. And the last thing I would say is that you need to serve the youth of Oakland County. You don't necessarily need to be based in Oakland County. So some of those communities that are on the border, but intentionally focused on Oakland County communities um, and their students are eligible as well. Well, Ellen, thank you so much for telling us about not only how uh, who these funds are eligible to be uh, accessed by and who they can support, but also some of the different initiatives that they're going toward that are really going to help kids in our classrooms and, and boost their education after a couple of really tough years mm -hmm. uh, at school. Thank you so much. It's great to be here with you.